So evidence-based medicine involves combining what is called the art of clinical practice, uh, which emerges from judgment experience and uh, <clears throat> something that is handed down in the culture from senior to junior and from one to another colleague. And this can then be combined with science, uh, which typically is the science which I describe as patient-centered research. I come to describe what this is in a second. Uh, but this type of science is organized in a hierarchy where sometimes of sub, some types of pieces of research have greater value than other types. And we will cover them also throughout this, uh, these three, day, three days of webinars. And when this science is combined with the experience, this is then described as evidence-based medicine. The first step in this evidence-based medicine paradigm is framing the questions, then searching the literature to identify what is relevant to our question, and to use, to appraise what we have identified for its value, and then to use it into practice if what we have found is valuable and trustworthy. If we think about the clinical process where a nurse, a medic, a radiologist, a radiographer, a physiotherapist, any other allied profession, when they come in contact with the clinical problem, they use their knowledge experience and typically knowledge of textbooks and combine it with their experience to make decisions. But evidence-based medicine require asking a question, acquiring the literature, appraising the literature, typically found literature that is typically found in published journals, and then combine it with what we know already in order to review whether our decision is correct uh, for the problem we face. As you will see in the coming uh, slides, the systematic review permits us to carry out this process by simply identifying and appraising a single article or a few articles that have systematically reviewed all the literature we need to address our question and then to use this information to inform practice. Now, before we proceed, let's have a little bit of an overview of um, the different types of literature that can exist. So we can have lab research, and this could evaluate physiological systems, cellular or even subcellular systems. Or we can have research that uh, evaluates patients or groups of people in society. And this could be described as patient-centered research. The idea is that the science moves quickly from testing in laboratory to having an impact in society. And this involves a process called research translation. And this is not a straight line. Here you can move forward, but maybe you have to move a step back before you can move fo further forward. And this cycle of forward and back continues until we can see it emerging as progress. And there are different levels at which uh, progress is made. And in the first step, one could call it assessment of efficacy, then moving on to effectiveness. And in terms of translation, this transition is called T2 research, according to some literature. 
And the earlier phases are called T0 and T1, where we are moving from lab closer to bedside. And then from T2, where we perform evidence synthesis and, and systematic reviews are a key, key type of evidence synthesis. And this is called T3 research. And then evidence is put into guidelines and then guidelines are implemented. And this is called T4 research or T4 transition. Make a health impact. There is a translation phase and this translation phase may involve several steps. If we, if we try to map onto this, the terminology frequently used in uh, pharmacology, then phase one trial, phase two trial, phase three trials map onto clinical efficacy and clinical effectiveness, as I show in this slide now. And then phase four, you can see, is at a much later stage of transition. So between phase three and phase four is the process of systematic reviews, evidence synthesis, and guideline making. And drug regulation uh, and approval happens before phase three, and phase four. I'd like to stop here and give chance for people to ask me and or make any comments about what I have said. And in order to do this verbally, please feel free to unmute your microphone and say anything you want to say. And at the end of that, please do mute your microphone. Please go ahead, anybody who may wish to make any comments or ask any questions. Okay, everybody is quiet. Why? Why is that? Because what is not relatable to what you are doing, or you, you, you or you, you are comfortable with what I've said. Everything is clear so far from uh, the smaller studies cover the uh, cover the field of drug regulatory approval is granted. And then systematic reviews are carried out and great. And then the interventions are rolled out. And during the rollout of the intervention, phase four studies are carried out so that uh, any, any issues can be identified at that stage. Okay, to think about this, just imagine what happened in the last two years and coronavirus vaccination. So in December 2019, the coronavirus, in December 2019, the coronavirus issue commenced. Uh, 
early pilot feasibility studies concerning the vaccine must have been carried out in the earlier months of 2020. During the later months of 2020, the large multi-center trials of coronavirus vaccination were carried out. And at the beginning of this year, regulatory approvals were granted and the vaccination was rolled out. To my knowledge, systematic have not been necessary or required in a published form so far for vaccination, but literature review regulatory authorities in a form that we are going to review in my three seminars. This review literature would have been used to make guidelines and give approvals. And following the rollout of the coronavirus vaccine, during the vaccination process, phase four studies would have been carried out. So I hope that looking at this example of coronavirus allows you to imagine this process of translation, the various type of studies, uh, the role of the multi-center, the large multi-center studies, and the systematic review where it fits in. At this stage, I'm going to make a little break again so that in case you have any questions, you can raise your questions 